Joining us for more, entrepreneur David Bavrez, columnist, author of Beijing Express, normally based in Hong Kong. Thanks for being with us. Well, thank you. Thank you for the invite. Uh, your uh, take on how Emmanuel Macron handled his hosts. It depends on uh, the purpose of the trip. If the trip was to put pressure on China vis-à-vis -vis Russia, it's obviously a failure. Because if you want a, a peace plan, you don't turn to the beneficiaries of the war, that are the US and China, you turn to the victims of the war, the Russian and Ukrainian people who have an interest to stop the war. The beneficiaries have an interest to maintain the war. So in that respect... China has an interest in maintaining the war? Obviously, because it's getting uh, your oil and gas very, very cheap at a time when oil prices are going up very strongly because of the OPEP cartel. So in that respect, it's a failure. Now, if you're Chinese, you say, I've made a mistake, I learned my mistakes, and how can I turn the threat into an opportunity? And the first lesson Mr. Macron should draw is, you need to split your enemies. This is the art of war. So you, we, from now on, need to split China from Russia. And the beauty is that President Xi gave us a, a huge gift two weeks ago on saying, I will not fund the gas pipe between Russia and China because I will not repeat the mistake of Germany of sourcing 50% of our gas from you. So we need to have a first message to Vladimir Putin and the Russian people on saying a limitless friendship from China, be careful. We wish you good luck. And we, the, we, we had heard the Chinese ambassador, we talked about it Thursday, China's ambassador to the EU saying, don't pay too much attention when we talk about, I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, don't pay too much attention when we talk about limitless friendships. Yeah, well, that's, that's very nice of him. Because obviously, uh, friendship by the, if you have a true friendship, by definition, it's, it's never limitless. And this is precisely what we Europeans have to do now, is we need to develop a, a friendship with China with limit. And where we have a commonality of China today is with the private sector that need to de-risk China. Our European companies, the 60 French companies that went with Mr. Macron, are making between 5 and 10% of their turnover in China. They need to de-risk. But imagine a what, private... So what's the difference between de-risk and decouple? Is it... Is it uh, oh, it's, very, it's, very, it's, it's your marginal capex. You, you stay in China because it's 20% of world GDP. But your marginal capex goes along with... You do JVs with the private Chinese entrepreneurs to go into Southeast Asia. This is the China plus one strategy. The most interesting region for the next 10 years. Much faster growth than mainland China. And today, it's in the hands of the private Chinese diaspora. So we, Europeans, have a vested interest, vested common interest with Chinese private So the, you're talking about the diaspora rules. in places like Singapore, exactly. Vietnam. And, and if you're a private... Chinese entrepreneur today, your number one priority is to get your capital out of China. So let's do it together. And let's team up together, invest in Southeast Asia, and re-globalize, there's no de-globalization, re-globalize the world. And, and that's, that's the second lesson of this visit to China. China is now a Lenino-Marxist society for 20% of world GDP. It has never happened before. We used to have uh, Cuba, Zimbabwe, North Korea. This is fun for Hollywood movies. Now it's 20% of world GDP. Mm. So we need to, we need to de-risk. And we have a commonality of interest, we European, with the Chinese private sector. With the Chinese private sector. And we heard the uh, uh, Internal Markets Commissioner uh, blasting the fact that uh, Europe sometimes underestimates its own uh, leveraging power uh, when it comes uh, to China and how strong its own economy is, but... But the reality, you know, China has never needed Europe so much. Uh, the rebalancing of the economy with domestic consumption does not work. You see, the real estate market is cracking, the wealth effect is disappearing, so the domestic consumption growth in China going forward is, extreme, is going to be extremely limited. China needs absolutely exports, from industries with higher value added. They can't get the technology from the US. The only place when they can source the tech is Europe. And Europe is their largest export market. So don't tell me that we cannot be in a strong bargaining yet, position when it comes to discussing with China. And yet, uh, it's, it's uh, one-on-ones. It's T for two, as we saw today with uh, 
with uh, Emmanuel Macron and, and Xi Jinping. It's not the, for instance, the French president would have liked to have gone with the German chancellor. That didn't happen. It was that first <coughs> Olaf Scholz, then it was exactly. the Spanish you, leader. You, now it's Emmanuel Macron. You, you see how the Chinese are masters at splitting the enemy. Right. Uh, you have this défilé. How, how, did, how did it go, Emmanuel Macron, bringing Ursula von der Leyen, the president of the European Commission, with him? She was only present I, on I one think day it's of the three it's days. It's the wrong strategy, because a good cop, bad cop strategy works in our Western world. It doesn't work in China, because China only respects the strong and has huge contempt for the weak. Ursula so, von der Leyen is weak? No, no, no. She's a tough girl. She's a tough cookie. She's German. She's a tough cookie. Uh, Macron is supposed to supposedly is a nice guy. The, the Chinese only respect the strong girl. They have contempt for the soft guy. So the bad cop, good cop that works in the US doesn't work in China. This is a, a pure uh, cultural mistake. Even though they rolled out the red carpet for Macron and for Ursula well, the, von der Leyen, she the, was welcomed the by the carpet the, is always the environment red. Minister. In China, the carpet is always red. So don't be impressed because the carpet is red. You know, that's, uh, <laughs> and let me ask you uh, uh, a personal question, David Bavrez. Do you feel like the last of the Mohicans going back to Hong Kong? I ask the question because I, I, I look at the number of expatriates who are leaving China in droves. Yeah. Um, Bloomberg, it's around one third going to half. Bloomberg uh, put out statistics two weeks ago where they said 30% uh, fewer Germans than before COVID, 20% fewer French and yeah. Italians. Uh, seems... Those people, are they ever coming back? Well, it depends. Hong Kong will survive only if it changes completely business model. When you're in Hong Kong, you realize we've entered the second Cold War. And the, this is, Hong Kong will be the Vienna of the Second World Cold War. This is the only place in the world where the Chinese and the Americans can speak to each other. The Chinese refuse to travel overseas because they can be extradited to the US anytime, what happened to the CFO of UAE. And the Americans refuse to go to Shanghai because they can be locked down for two months without food. So the only place where the two of them can meet is Hong Kong, which is why it's so fascinating to be there, because this is only, it's in Hong Kong that I think I understand best the relationship in this but second... But what are investors Kong. telling you, that they're not coming back, that they are coming back? Ah, different. So the, the old business model of Western capital going into China, this is gone. The Chinese have tons of capital. They don't want our capital anymore. GIC, the best foreign investor, so the, the sovereign fund of Singapore, has publicly said we are not putting money in China anymore because we don't have a five-year visibility. So this job description of Hong Kong is gone. So if you want to go to Hong Kong for that purpose, don't go. Conversely, if you want to manage a US-China relationship with one trillion US dollar of business at stake, then Tons of things are going to happen in Hong Kong, and it's fascinating to be there. But here, at the, at the best schools, people were learning Mandarin a few years ago. Is that over? No, it's still, it's still, typically, I mentioned earlier on the cultural mistake that Mr. Macron has been doing, good cop, bad cop. If Mr. Macron was speaking Mandarin, he wouldn't have made the mistake. We need, China knows so much about the Western world. We, Western guys, have to learn the Chinese culture, 20% mm. of world GDP. We have to. It's not a matter of I like it, I don't like it. We have to live with it. David Bavrez, the author of Beijing Express, thank you for being thank with you. us. Thank you. Thank you very much.